What's up, everybody? This is Dave Mandanka of The Breakdown Show. What's happening, Audley Stevenson? We're here hanging out with our boy Tim. And, of course, The Breakdown Book. That's the book, that, Dave, that's the book we got out right now, man. Yes, yes. Basketball talk the way it should be. Everybody's got to get it. Groups fans are going to love it. It's got great quotes from our past guests. Funny, inspiring, all rolled up into one. Yeah, the be- and the best part about it is that we're supporting a couple of great charities uh, that are near and dear to our heart. Uh, and, yeah, proceeds are helping them out. Uh, the the uh, Aaron O. Kids Foundation, Epilepsy, Halton and Peel. Uh, it's a great cause, man. you gotta got to support the cause. Exactly. The breakdownbook.com, that's where you get it. I got the notion that uh, they mouse is open and uh, all that's just talking when uh, they ain't comparing to me. Yo guys, what's going on? I'm Tim. This is Cash Kelly and AC Sports Report. We got two guests on today. We got Dave and Audley from the BreakdownShow.com. They also do a podcast. What's going on, guys? Just hanging out, man. Thanks for having us. No problem. Yes, it's awesome. All right, um, we're gonna go over a bunch of topics. Obviously, as you saw at the beginning of this video, check out their website and buy their book. It's a great book. I've seen. Uh, Parts of it, it looks pretty good. I think I'm gonna have to check it out. Uh, the first thing we're gonna start off with: the other day was the one-year anniversary of the decision, and I have my thoughts on this. First off, do you guys think it was good for the NBA? Oddly, go ahead. Well, I mean, you know, generally, if you're looking what it did for the league, I mean, you know, what 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 the Miami Heat did, uh, they, they you know they put the NBA on the map. I mean. Commissioner David Stern's got to be laughing <laughs> all the way to when he, when he checks out the ratings and he looks how popular you know his his game was relevant once again and you know there's certain parts uh, you know as much as a, a, a basketball like me a basketball guy like me loves the sport you know I also know it, it wasn't relevant everywhere well all of a sudden people wanted to watch the Miami Heat play regardless of who they were playing on a night to night basis so I mean you know and, and from a business standpoint yeah the decision worked for them it, it may not have been well, the plan going in, but it definitely worked uh, when you look at the final numbers. Yeah, I agree completely. I, I mean, I did a, I saw a poll on ESPN.com that basically asked this question, and I mean, I'm not a huge supporter of that website or anything, but I did the poll, and I said, of course it is, obviously. I mean, I'm one of the people who I enjoyed watching the NBA, but this season... It's not that it made me an NBA fan because I'm not even a Heat or LeBron or Wade or Chris Bosh fan, but I, I enjoyed watching the game more. The game, like you said, seemed more relevant than it had in the past few years. The ratings were as good as they've been since uh, Jordan retired, so I really enjoyed watching it. But on this poll, like 78% of the people said that it wasn't good for the NBA. I, I, I just I don't understand what people were watching. Dave, what do you think? Well, I think why so many people thought it was a bad move is because maybe it set this precedent that, you know what, like, if you got three, like, NBA All-Stars who uh, conspire to go on a team, and it's sort of like people consider it cheating, right? Oh, so these guys, you know, they're not doing it the legit way, you know, through trades and through, like, just normal, you know, like, GM work and stuff like that. But these guys actually, you know, put that intent in there. Okay, you know what, let's team up. And people were concerned, wait a second, if, you know, any top three players can come on a team and, you know, make this happen beforehand, that's not good because you're going to have these super teams all over the place. So that's where I see the concern, but it's ridiculous because there's no way you're going to have, like, 28 super teams because teams can't afford it, first off. Oh, yeah. You know, and, well, and another thing about this, too, the fact of the matter is the Miami Heat lost and, and people were watching them lose. So how can you say, you know, going to your point, Tim, you know, how can you say it was bad for the league? When you, when you look at the numbers and the ratings, yeah. you know, it, it was beautiful. If you, you know, if you're sitting in the NBA uh, boardroom and executives looking down at, at how your sport did, you're laughing. Yeah, and the, the Heat not winning is going to make people come back whenever the next season is and enjoy watching the game and rooting against LeBron James and Dwayne Wade and rooting for whoever they root for to beat them. And... I mean, the Mavericks coming out of nowhere, I think, had a big part because people were able to kind of worship Dirk when they previously kind of hated on him as someone who choked, but they rode him through this championship, and 
I think that the decision was as good as it it was what it was. It was a stupid program. I didn't enjoy watching one second of it. I found Jim Gray to be about 900 times more annoying than LeBron James on this whole thing. Right. But uh, I think that in the end, it brought that had higher ratings in certain games in the NBA Finals, dude. Before people care. There's so many people that hate LeBron James, and there were so many people that love LeBron James, and now there's so many people who are in between because they used to love him, and now they're... LeBron James has become the for sure face of the NBA, and he's brought the publicity back to the NBA. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Le- Le- LeBron James reminds me of a, a professional wrestler in the WWE. You know, you go from being the hero to the villain in no time. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that one of the reasons people hated on this guy so much, and one of the reasons I, I just I don't feel the same way, is because everyone wanted to compare him to Jordan. There were so many people out there at the beginning of his career and on that were determined to just hate on this guy and prove every single every single time he did something wrong that oh he, Jordan wouldn't have done that. Like that's the part that bothered me the most, and that's. I just never looked at it like that. I looked at it as there's never going to be another Michael Jordan, just like there's never going to be another Magic Johnson or Kareem or Larry Bird. But you just got to enjoy what's out there now. For sure. Well, the thing is, guys, LeBron, he is not Michael Jordan. He's got more of a Magic Johnson type of mold, I think. Just the ability to make everybody else around him better. He's not going to be the guy who's going to, especially on this Heat team, he's not going to be the guy who goes, He's going to take that shot first. He's going to spread that ball around. And as we saw in the NBA Finals, the ball was a hot potato. He never wanted to make that shot. For sure. Yeah. I, 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 think, I think that's it. I mean, he's a, he's a Magic Johnson. That's what he is. And, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of wish the comparisons would also stop because they're really pointless. Uh, it doesn't tell you nothing at the end of the day. Uh, you know, we, 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 we get into all these discussions about, you know, what makes a great player and, you know, is it the rings, is it the impact on the game, is how much, you know, what, what their numbers were. Like, and, that, and we really got to bring it back and focus on the game, on, on the player, and forget that other stuff. It's so irrelevant. I don't care, you know, what his numbers look like against Jordan because they're never going to play each other. They're never going to see each other on the court. So it doesn't really matter. Yeah, no, the only place you'll ever see them play is NBA 2K. There you go. There you go. <laughs> that is the only place you're ever going to see them play unless Jordan follows through and plays for the Bobcats, where he'd probably still be the best player on the team. Now, some, something I've heard a lot of is people think that LeBron didn't make the right decision on who he went. So I don't think there's anyone that actually thinks he made the right or the wrong decision. He should have stayed in Cleveland or gone to New York, although... You team up him and Amari, and you could maybe make a case for that. But I, I think everyone looks at the Bulls and says, "Well, if he went there, you got another MVP. Whether he, he won that MVP fairly or not, I, I don't think he did. I think LeBron should have been the MVP this year. But I, I think if you look at that, there, there's reasons why going to Chicago would not have worked for LeBron, and I think the biggest one is the comparisons." But I think th- there's other things. Like, Derrick Rose never would have had to step up and beat. He's a very, very good player, and I don't think he would have stepped up the way he did this year. And I think if you put LeBron in that system there, for sure a good team, for sure can t- a title contender. But I, when, when you come two wins away from winning the NBA Finals, I, it's tough for me to say you made the wrong choice. Right. Well, and, and let's also be clear on a couple of things here. The fact of the matter is that, you know, when you go back to last season, Le- LeBron James was kind of the linchpin in all the moves that happened. Uh, I, I, I can tell you something. You know, LeBron James went to New York. Amari Stoudemire wouldn't have gone there. Amari Stoudemire was a, sort of the afterthought, if you will, for the Knicks. So, I mean, that, that, and then as well with the Bulls, the Bulls made a whole series of moves once LeBron made up his mind and said he's heading to Miami. So, you know, the way the teams are currently constructed are only because are only only because of where LeBron James has ended up. And I can assure you if he ended up on any of those two teams that we talked about, that you know, they would look they, they look vastly different than what they're looking like now. Yeah, that's a good point. And fellas, remember, he, LeBron's going to get his titles. Okay? Right. Yeah, it didn't happen this year. He's going to win. And not maybe not 6 or 7. But he's going to get a title, and Miami was the right choice. Him and Dwayne Wade would make a nice pair. Is Bosch going to stick around? It remains to be seen. 
but it's just a matter of Pat Riley getting the right supplementary parts around those guys to make it happen. So it's, it's going to happen. Miami, like, uh, LeBron made the right choice. If he stayed in Cleveland, really, like, you know, like, yeah, would yeah. he have ever won on his own? I don't know. I really don't know. I doubt it. I don't know. Yeah, and, and the, other, the other thing, too, you know, is a title good enough for LeBron? So if he wins a title, will that satisfy the critics? No. He's got to win yeah. three or four more for them to yeah. say, okay, maybe you're a great player. Right. Yeah, so, and I, I think that... He's one of these guys, you know, it kind of reminds me of Kobe a few years ago. You remember there was a point where Kobe could not do anything right. He was shooting too much. Uh, then when he shot less, he said he couldn't win by himself. Then he said he couldn't pass the ball. He couldn't make his teammates better. Very similar to LeBron James. It's like everything he does, he's under scrutiny, and he, and he just can't win. Do you think that that will... Re Another question I saw in the polls was... um. Well, will the decision define LeBron James' career? And I remember I was younger, but back when the whole Kobe rape thing and all that was going on, everyone thought that that would define Kobe's career. And obviously, uh, coming back and winning numerous championships, being on teams with Shaq and Pau Gasol, it certainly helped him. But he's been one of the key, if not the best player on some of those teams. And um, do you think the decision will define LeBron James when it's all said and done? Well, you know what, Tim? I, I think the thing about winning, it sort of ignites the amnesia. You know, <laughs> people will forget. <laughs> yeah, 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 the decision is, a, you're right, it is definitely a, a turning point in his career. But once he starts winning, people will remember him as a champion first. That's it. That's it. I mean, professional sports is exactly that. It's what have you done for me lately, a kind of mentality. And if you're winning, you know, it doesn't matter what you have done. All your past transgressions will float away. <laughs> yeah, and I remember when uh, Kobe wanted to leave a few years ago, and everyone was in the same situation. And now Kobe ended up ne never leaving, obviously. And I heard someone say that, um, well, we even have people in the game now that wouldn't leave their own team like Kobe Bryant. I just I kind of laughed at it because we all knew that the the Cavs were basically capped out if they kept LeBron James. There was nothing else they could do for another two or three seasons, and it made sense for LeBron to leave. And LeBron wants to win. Everyone says, well, he made this statement about wanting to be one of the richest people in the world. Maybe his head really isn't on basketball, number one. Well, I, I don't think he would have done something that somewhat tarnishes his legacy, taken less money, if his head wasn't number one on winning basketball games. Well, you know, again, I just kind of think that, uh, the, the, you know, again, the focus does have to be on basketball, but... Uh, yeah. You know, if if LeBron James, the, the guy can't do anything right. It doesn't matter what he does, guys. Sure. He will win. He can go. He can win five titles in a row, back to back to back, and they'll say, "Well, he didn't win it the right way. He won it because he was playing with other guys. He's not a superstar. He's just in a. It's one of these situations. I I do. I, you know, when you look at where he is, I do not envy his situation at all. Like, with all the money in the world, with all the power he has, with all, I don't envy it at all, because he is constantly under scrutiny. But wait a second, Bill Audrey. Like He's not helping himself when, after Game 6 of the NBA Finals, he has that post-game conference saying, you know, uh, to his haters, listen, guys, yeah, at least, you know, I get to go back to my luxurious life, but you have to go back to your 9-to-5 existence. So, right. come on. You're not helping yourself. Oh, okay, so... But, but wasn't a bit of that comment... Well, no, but he's not helping himself by saying stuff like that. Come on. But wasn't a bit of that comment almost true to the point where he was saying, look, you guys are sending stuff to my Twitter, you're hating. Eventually, this is just going to become a tired thing because I'm going to win my championships and you're going to be this guy sitting here and half the people that are hating on me now are going to come back like they did when Kobe won his rings. Yeah. But the thing is, Tim, like he was referencing, okay, the 9 to fivers, but he forgot... He forgot that 9 to fivers are not just his haters, but also the people that support him. So he was offending them too. Sure. And I mean, and, and that certainly wasn't intentional, but listen, listen. You, you think about being in LeBron James' shoes, you know, the, how many times has he been asked the same question over and over and over again? And how many people are spewing all kinds of venom his way, attacking his Twitter? I mean, I've gone on his Twitter and see people, I mean, they're, people are all for blood for this guy. I mean, after a while, it gets you, and you know what? He's only human. He's only human. But again, yeah, and he, he's got to watch first take once in a while and just kind of 
want to throw a brick through his TV at Skip Bayless. I mean... He's got to have a few broken televisions. Oh, I'm sorry. Skip Bayless is one of the stupidest people in the world. But... Uh, you're not liking his shirt, huh? Do you, do you like his Brian Colangelo type shirt? <laughs> I love how he wears a suit and then on the, or a jacket and then underneath he, he wears like a Hanes t-shirt. That's my favorite part about this. <laughs> and every single time he's debating someone, he, he points his pen at them. And if, if he didn't cover you, you have no chance of ever being a good player. <laughs> wow, I'm noticing some tension. Ted and Skip Bayless, whoa. Yeah. Appreciate had Skip on the show. Uh, th th that's not a new... I've asked him. I, I would love to come on here and debate him because I'm pretty sure I could pretty much prove him wrong, but he wouldn't listen. He, he he never responds to anyone. The only time I've ever seen him respond to anything is... Uh, him and Reggie Bush were in something a few weeks ago, but that's the only time I've ever seen him respond to anything. The guy, he's a fake. The guy, he's an act put together by ESPN, and I don't hate all of ESPN, but this is why I dislike a lot of it, because I think they tell this guy what to say, and he just goes out and says it, and the unfortunate part is people continue to give it attention, which is going to continue to give that show ratings, which will keep it on television. Right. Well, yeah, I hear you. Wow, it's crazy. Hey, Kim, did you get that new ESPN book? What What was it? I didn't even hear. Yeah, it's a new ESPN book that just documents all the behind-the-scenes juicy stuff at uh, the world the leader in sports. Not to take a shot at ESPN, because when I grow up, I would love to be on a radio station, and it would probably be an affiliation of ESPN, but who cares? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Love it. Okay, well, yeah, I'm sure there's someone out there. There's at least there's at least there's, there's at least one person out there that cares. I'm sure. Yeah, the the mom of the person who wrote the book. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. Zing. <laughs> nah, no kidding.